there is an agreement present. So when they coexist, you have the fortitude to overcome and to achieve limitless feats. That is, if there is an agreement with the change that is taking place in your life and the transition that you go through to successfully come out of the change. And the change doesn't have to be negative. When we think change, we often give it a negative connotation, but it doesn't have to be a negative experience. But what holds true is this. If you are not prepared to transition through your change, it will have a negative effect on how well you overcome, or how well you reach that place that you're trying to reach, how well you ascend to where you're trying to ascend to through your change. Transition only begins once some things come to an end. That's another statement that Bishop gave us last week. He actually gave this change early, I mean this speech earlier in the year, but I'm glad that he brought the topic up last week because I think it's something that we can continue to build from and listen to and grow from and study over and over and over again. Iyala Van Zandt said, everything that happens to you is a reflection of what you believe about yourself. We cannot outperform our level of self-esteem. We cannot draw to ourselves more than we think that we are worth. So how can you let anything go? Remembering transition only begins when you let some things go. But how can you let anything go that you believe is true about yourself or your circumstance? It'll never happen. Once a question was posed to us during service, and it was, when you look in the mirror, does it look back, does it tell you the truth about yourself, or does it tell you a lie? That is to say, when you look in the mirror, have you made it a trick mirror? How many people remember going into some of those amusement parks and you have those trick mirrors in there, and it gives you these different images of yourself? Yeah. So is your mirror faulty? Is it a trick mirror? Are you seeing an image that is the truth about who you are? Or does it tell you what you want it to say? Where are you with what you see? Have you somehow disguised the image that looks back at you? What is it that truly keeps your mind, your body, and your soul from transitioning? Is it that you just can't let go of some things. You want to, but you just can't. Maybe you don't know how. A challenge to your transition could be because you just don't know who you are. And we can go through a lifetime of living and still not really tap into who we truly are. Why? Because for some of us, we have been defined by others. We have been defined by what their impression of us are. We have been defined by the things that we've experienced in life. We have been defined by the lies we tell ourselves. You may encounter many defeats, and this is, I love quotes, you'll hear me using them quite often. Uh, and I'm a writer, so I have my own special quotes, but I'm not famous yet, so nobody cares about that. <laughs> You may encounter many defeats, says Maya Angelou, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary for you to encounter defeats so you can know who you are, what you can rise from, and how you can come out of it. You can't demand change in your life, pray for change, and plan for change, then make excuses as to why you won't transition in those changes. What good is the plan if it does not execute it? You can do everything, you can follow all of the steps in your situation, because change is situational. You can follow all of the steps in your situation to make things look different, but if your thought process is not different, then you're still the same old thing. You're just wrapped well, you're, you're basically wrapped in the same thing. Everything that's inside the box is the same. You can change the wrapping, but inside the box is still the same. So you have not transitioned. To truly make my life in sync with the different things that, that happens in my life, then again, I can denote the change, I can see that it's there, I can pray for it, I can expect it, I can wait on it. But if I'm not ready to walk in it, and I don't 
mean, again, just a physical walk, but if mentally my thought process is the same. If I look at you and I still still see the same on you, well, let's make it personal. If I look at me and still see the same on me, then I'm not ready. There's going to be a counter effect to the change and the transition. Again, change is external, but transition is internal. Mia Love, she, she's a Republican woman in Ohio, and she was just, in Utah, I'm sorry, and she was just elected to the U.S. Congress. She is the first black Republican woman to have been elected to Congress. And you'll also hear me talk about politics because in my first career, I was involved in politics. I worked for the Republican Party. I am a registered Republican. Now, not everybody understands that because we have an idea of who should be what and what should be who because people have defined us. And so we follow that definition according to the lines that they have uh, written for us. But I was excited, uh, especially, I was excited for Carol Brown mostly when she was appointed to, um, when she was elected because someone didn't finish her term to the U.S. Senate. She's a Democrat. I was excited for her too. She's a woman. I was very excited. But I'm excited for Mia Love because this is not her first bid for the House. This was her second bid. She served in the city council for six years, and then she went on to become mayor, and then she put her bid out for the, the U.S. House for the Congress. For the Congress. And she did not win her first bid, and it was interesting because even those people who are around her, even those people within the party, um, they were, she had everyone's support. But then when she decided that, well, I'm not, there's a line that looks like it's drawn for me, but the mayor's race is not the highest that I want to get to. I want to push and go a little further. And so then there were folks who said, well, I don't know if you're going to be able to do that. We support you in this and we support you in that, but I don't know that you will be able to, go, to do that. Sometimes we can't transition with the changes around us and the changes in our lives because people have given us a parameter of how we are to function, what we are to accomplish, what we can achieve, and we believe it. And that goes for any person. I, I use her as an example because, of course, we just had an election and I hope you all voted. However you voted, I hope you all voted. And uh, hers was a great a great, great feat. But again, are you setting parameters around yourself so that when you look in the mirror, you know what you want to see when the image reflects back? But somehow there's a blinder, there's a block, there's something that actually could prevent you from being able to see who you are, how you can overcome, what you are able to overcome, what you're able to rise from. It's one thing to come out of a situation, it's something totally different to overcome a situation. That's where our transition comes in. We can come out of a bad relationship, we can come out of a bad employment situation, we can come out of a bad friendship, we can come out of a lot of bads. But if we never overcome it in our psychological, we are actually still there, and we're actually doomed to repeat the same thing. So then, there goes this conflict with your life of change and your existence of transition. They don't walk in agreement. There is no power, no true power that you function in. Keeping in mind that change is continuous. It's fluid. It doesn't start, then stop. Every time you look around, something is going to change. And some people say, I just can't, if I transition once, if I get my mind ready to accept this or to receive that or to function in this, to turn around and to do it all again, well, it's understanding the basis of what transition looks like. You won't accomplish everything overnight in your psychological transition to the change in your life. But as long as you're open Olivia is saying, open my heart to you. As long as you're open, there is truth to what you see, to the image that reflects back to you when you look into the mirror. It's not a disguise. It's not a trick mirror. You respect where you are. 
you respect where you are in life. This is something that I had to learn. When I came, I came out of, I won't say I came all the way to politics, but I used to be the executive director of a county office. And I won't say what county, but it was a pretty big county. And I left in 2009 to re-engage in consulting work. And I thought, well, I'll just take everything that I've learned and I'll become a public involvement specialist. Um, and then I'll do some events because I like event planning and all that. And then maybe I'll write a book. You know, I just have so many thoughts that I'll get to. And then I did some contractual work and then change happened in life. It took a great, great turn. Then my life started looking completely different than it did before. And then I started to think, I am not who I am because I wasn't doing what I was doing before. And so I lost this, this sense of value of who I was. I, change had occurred, but I wasn't transitioning very well right. in that change. And then I started to allow it to affect how I saw myself. And so there's this constant battle going on with who I know I am to be, but what I actually see when I look in the mirror. There was no agreement in this change and transition. And then I had to get to a place, and this was just recently, within a year, within a year or so, I had to get to this place, and I said, wait a minute. I have to respect life where I am. And once I respect where I am in life, I can transition into where I'm going. This is just a transition that goes along with the change. And I'm going to stop right there so the band can come back up. Thank you guys for your attention.